Having low or unstable pH in your reef aquarium is really not a good situation for the inhabitants in the tank, especially if you're keeping corals. But you need to know that you're not alone. A lot of people have the same problems and there are some things that you can do about them. Make sure you stay to the end of the video because I actually show test results from before and after having the CO2 scrubber installed on my system. And it's pretty interesting to say the least. In this video, we're gonna talk about what causes this problem, why it's important and what you need to do about it to get it fixed. So first up, causes. So low pH in an aquarium can be caused by a number of things, but for the purposes of this video, we're going to assume that your salt, your salinity, and the parameters in your reef tank otherwise than pH are all looking good and they're in the ranges that they need to be. So we're talking about external factors that are outside the aquarium, but they're affecting the things on the inside of the tank. The room that your aquarium is in may have a lot of things going on in there. Things like people or animals being in that room. Maybe there's a furnace on. The windows are closed because it's cold outside. So there's a lack of airflow and circulation in the room, smoking in the room, or even poorly or unvented fuel burning appliances like a water heater can all contribute to an increase in CO2 in the environment around your aquarium. That CO2 then gets drawn into the aquarium through gas exchange and it drags the pH down, sometimes lower than we want it to be. So why is this important? Why do we even need to worry about this anyway? Well, pH is basically the measurement of how acidic or how alkaline your water is. And without getting too far deep into it, it needs to be at a good balance in the middle. The typical range for a saltwater aquarium runs from 7.6 to about 8.4, with 8.1 to 8.3 sort of being that sweet spot for calcification and coral growth to happen as best as it can. Stability is incredibly important as well, and unstable or low pH in an aquarium can contribute negatively to a lot of things that are going on in the aquarium. Too low, and it can start releasing phosphates from your rocks, causing problems with algae increase, your coralline algae can start dying off as well, and it can begin stressing or bleaching and sometimes even killing corals if it gets too far out of whack. So what do we need to do about it? Well, some of the first things that you can do to try to help this out are environmental things. You can open a window near the tank or you can maybe turn the heater off, but this is not always possible and it's usually not a permanent solution. One of the things that you can do to the tank that will permanently help you with a low or unstable pH problem is adding a skimmer onto the tank. Skimmers intake salt water and also intake air. They mix those together and churn up a bunch of bubbles in the tank. And that reaction helps to stabilize the pH and helps increase it just a little bit. I've had tanks in the past where the simple addition of a skimmer onto the tank brought my pH from 7.8 up to 8.1, which is really close to where the range I wanted it to be. And that tank ran fine at 8.1 for many, many years. But what if that's not enough? Is there anything else you can do? In fact, there is. You could install a CO2 scrubber, much like the one I have in my hand here from IceCap that was sent to me by the guys over at Coral View. This is a very nice product. And what this does is uses a CO2 media that goes in this chamber the skimmer intake gets connected to the top here and it draws the air through this CO2 media, binding up the CO2 to the calcium hydroxide media that's on the inside, removing that CO2 from the air that's going into the tank. And this can increase your pH for you by an average of up to 0.3 points. So if you're sitting at an 8.0, just adding one of these might take you up to an 8.3 and put you in that sweet spot range for the best coral growth and coloration that you're gonna get out of your tank. You absolutely must have a skimmer to be able to use this product as it works in conjunction with the skimmer to get the job done. There's really no way to use one without having a skimmer. So if you don't have one, you're gonna to have to do some research and pick one that's gonna be a good fit for your tank. Next up, you're gonna to wanna to open your CO2 scrubber in whatever way it calls for and add your CO2 media into the scrubber. Now it's important for you to note that this media does get exhausted over time. So you might want to consider getting a media like this one that's pink and it turns white when it's been used up, giving you a visual indication that it's time to change that media and you don't have to rely completely on your pH tests and wonder if the media is the reason that your pH might be dropping down a point or two over time. 
Once you have your media in, you're going to place this thing wherever you want it in the tank and connect that air line from the skimmer into the correct port on top of the CO2 scrubber. Turn on your skimmer and give it a little time to see how it goes. I recommend testing the pH at least a couple of days before you're going to add a CO2 scrubber. And then after you've added it, wait 24 hours or so and test it for a couple of days after that just to see what the results are going to look like for you. So now let's talk about test results. As you can see, I'm using Aquatic Log to track the parameters of my aquarium. It's a really great app and you can use uh, one tank in the app for free. But if you notice, my pH has been stable at 8 now for quite some time. And I would like to get it up to the 8.2 or 8.3 range. So I went ahead and got the scrubber installed on the system. And with the magic of editing, now we can see what's going on after the scrubber was installed. It's the next day in real life and I've got five milliliters of water here in my Salifert test kit. We're going to go ahead and check this and we're just going to see where it's at. Everything has been running now for a little bit less than 24 hours. Go ahead and get the six drops in. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right. We'll close this up and uh, just give it a little bit of a swirl around here. And there we go. So you're welcome for putting the second part of the video in the same video. If that doesn't deserve a subscribe or a follow, I don't know what does. We're all mixed up here. So let's take a look. It's probably going to be very difficult for you to see what's going on here. But to me, that looks like a little bit higher than 8.0. And of course, everything is going to be a little bit different on camera for you than it is for me. So let me go move around and check this and see what I think. All right. So as per usual, the color in the test is not exactly the same as what's on the color chart, but it does look like it's about 8.2 to me. There's a lot more blue color to the water than it was when I tested before last week and several times before that and got the 8.0 result. So I absolutely think that the CO2 scrubber has done the job. It's actually working and my pH is probably going to go up just a little higher than that to 8.25 or 8.3 or somewhere close to that before it's all said and done with. But it's absolute proof right there that adding a CO2 scrubber to your system can increase your pH. So if you need more information about what pH does in a reef aquarium and what you can do to fix it or alter it, check this video out on the screen right there. I'm going to see you over there.